<laughs> well, you have uh, sailed past the dreaded Monday, crushed uh, the terrible Tuesday <laughs> without <Okay>. a glitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now Wednesday beckons. Mm -hmm. Rise up and wake up. Yes, good morning, everyone. It's a brand new day, brand new opportunities, and of course, loads of love. And uh, well, hey, you need to love all, but trust a few. You were talking about that just before we came yeah. in here, right? <laughs> Depending on what party they belong to. But uh, Tokwe is in the kitchen looking yeah. lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Good morning. Uh, trust me, I am totally reliable. Uh, okay. I think we should give Tokwe what? something to be doing. Wow. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> so, I so that I when think. the camera comes to the kitchen, she's, you know, to yeah. actually. It's a bit too early. Beating okay. eggs or something. It's wow. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit too early, Yomi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your favorite breakfast uh, TV show. Uh, my name is Yomi Ope and it's Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Titi Lyo Oyinsu and you need to stream with us. TVCentertainment.tv and of course on Facebook at TVC Connect. Send in those comments as soon as you can. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Yeah, now this is a quick reminder. Uh, the app is available for download both on iOS and, I, uh, and uh, the Android store. And you can watch us from anywhere you are. Mm. Mm. As long as you have a mobile device, yes, just indeed. take us with you. And we have quite a bit in store for you this morning. Being a Wednesday, we need to get to it quickly. Mm -hmm. We'll start off the show with our first musical performance will be from Jack Z uh, with a song, It's Sure For Me. <laughs> I was trying to... <laughs> And after that, we have some more music. We have Afro Cool recording artist and producer Dash. On relationships today, we'll be talking about uh, something common is in most. Uh, Marriages. It's called conflict. Sometimes mm. it even happens in the first week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But anyway, so conflict in marriage. And uh, marriage counselor BC Folari is going to be joining us today. Hola, BC Folari. Can't wait for that discussion to start. Cannot wait at all. On nutrition today, Susan Ajibade will be here. She'll be sharing the nutritional benefits of fats and oils. As you know, we've been having a series. We've gone through carbohydrates, we've gone through proteins. Now, the important fats in your life. We'll be talking about that today. Interior decoration trends in 2020. Uh, this one is going to be really nice. Stick around for home, the homemaker segment on the show today and uh, tips for beautifying your home, office, or any other space. I love these pictures that I'm seeing on the screen there. Beautiful. Nice colors. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Is that a bed? That's, I don't know. It's like a sofa bed. A sofa bed. <laughs> and MM was at Alpha Studio Fitness. You need to join her a little later on as she works on reducing excess belly fat. Bam. And finally, we're going to be joined by Nigerian, uh, fast Nigerian, fast rising Nigerian comedian and actor Bukumi, popularly known as Preacher. <laughs> you know these uh, internet sensations now, these skits of a thing, yeah. they're just, it's encouraging really how yeah. the internet has given many a platform to do all the things they thought they would never be able to do, yeah. uh, reach the people they never thought they would they be able to reach. reach. Yeah, social media can make you a star within... <laughs> Minutes. Yeah. 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 Very true. Interesting. Interesting. Overnight. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, there are so many things I want to talk about. But first <laughs> off, so yesterday I had quite a rough day. Then I spoke to my stepdad and then I learned something of you really don't know how things could just get solved 
if you don't talk about it. Right. Like, so I'm not usually the person that actually seeks for help. Like, I like to believe I can solve my problems myself. So I had a conversation with my step. I'm not telling what we talked about. But <laughs> then I did have a conversation with my stepdad. This is a shout out to him because I know he's watching all the way from the UK. So use the way, um, make sure you download and be like my stepdad <laughs> and watch this. So, yeah, oh, so I, I, this is just me telling you guys that you should try to talk about mm. your problems. Maybe not to your dad or your mom, yeah. but just talk about it. Talk about it. Find someone that you find trust, someone. safe space, yeah. uh, express yourself. Yeah. That's really good, yeah. So uh, I feel that, you know, a lot of us are blessed with people to speak to, yeah. uh, but then there are a few that are not. Mm. And that's because the environment has never really been encouraging of people telling people about their problems. Mm. Mm. Uh, and that's, you know, that whole mindset of, I beg Joe, I have my own problems to solve. Yeah. That kind of mindset True. has really infiltrated through generations. And it's yeah. sad. But now, in, in the world we live in now, talking about it, speaking up, you never know where that solution might come from. Very true. Someone might have an idea that will just change everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you don't say anything about it, you'll just you never, never know. know. Yeah, and, yeah. And of course, you know what? Uh, yeah, we usually quote the Bible. So uh, <laughs> it says, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. So mm -hmm. if you have a lot of people talking to you, you know, about a certain thing, and you have lots of people that you can engage with when there's a problem, yeah. then you're safer yeah. than if you just keep all the, all the problems to yourself. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Now we have to go to the news right now. Ibrahim is standing by. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the news. Cases of Lassa fever are on the rise. 84 cases have been recorded in Ondo State this year, and 16 persons have also died. State epidemiologist Stephen Fagbimi disclosed this during a meeting with Governor Luaro Timba Kiridulu and local government chairman in Akure. According to him, the 16 patients died because their cases had reached an advanced stage uh, before they were brought to hospitals. He adds that 47 people who are in admission are responding to treatment, while 21 others have already been discharged. In the first two weeks, of the, until now, like we are less than three weeks, we have reported 84 from five cases in Ondo State. And then we are approaching the season. The, the peak of time we expect Lassa fever to occur is yet to come. It's around February, March. So the implication for this is our treatment center, they are already overwhelmed to even get bed space for patients. You need to face an important challenge now. And unfortunately, this is, this is probably not an area you can make money. Because uh, usually it's only where you can make money that you always have to work. At least five persons died in a suspected case of Lassa fever in Kano State. Four of the victims are medical professionals and the fifth is a pregnant woman who underwent cesarean section at a Minucano teaching hospital. Our correspondent Ibrahim Issa brings, up to, uh, brings us up to speed on this development. Reasons for the death of five people, including four medical professionals and a patient, is yet to be confirmed. The Kano State Ministry for Health says it has since taken blood samples and has been transmitted for investigation, which would take about 48 hours. Only upon completion of investigation would the ministry conclude that Lassa was responsible for the death of doctors and a patient. Amini Kano Teaching Hospital, where the incident occurred, has since taken measures during its stakeholders' meeting that contact tracing is presently being undertaken. The hospital is currently sensitizing its staff. Similarly, the Nigerian Medical Association in Kano State expressed sadness over the loss of lives of its members due to suspected disease. We are waiting for the result of the investigation, and as soon as they are available, we'll bring you more updates on the matter. And we also await the Minister of um, Health to brief uh, the media today on this development. On a second day this week, the Supreme Court delivered judgment on state government, uh, governorship election petitions. The first was the affirmation of Samuel Tom's victory as governor of Benue State. The Supreme Court agreed with counsel to the respondent that the judgment of the law courts should not be disturbed. Uh, the appeal filed by Emmanuel Jime was dismissed. Governor of Adamawa State, Ahmed Fintiri, also had reasons to smile as the apex court upheld his victory. The court insisted that there is a need for a petitioner who alleges overvoting to give concrete evidence. The position of the court is that the onus is on the petitioner to lead evidence right from the polling unit that overvoting was in favor of the respondent and cannot rely on the smart card readers alone 
to approval of voting. The terrorists had beheaded Reverend Andimi after rejecting a, five, uh, a 50 million naira ransom. They had earlier demanded for the sum of two million pounds. The Christian Association of Nigeria has called on the federal government to wake up to its constitutional obligations. So Lawa was uh, uh, abducted by the members of the board. So Lawan was uh, uh, abducted by the members of the Boko Haram over two weeks ago. And they threatened that they will kill him if two million euro was not given. But at the end of the day, actually, they, it seemed that they were not really interested in, in money. They were really out to kill him. He was beheaded yesterday. Because last week, they called the wife on Thursday, and they told her that uh, they will be beheading him on Saturday. So they didn't do it on Saturday. They waited until Monday, yesterday, and then they did it. Well, the governor is deeply saddened. Uh, it is really uh, lamentable that uh, the matter concerning uh, Reverend Lawan Andimi, uh, who is the can chairman of uh, Michika local government that was abducted, uh, has come to this uh, unfortunate uh, end. Uh, the governor sends his uh, sympathies and regrets to uh, the Christian community, particularly the Christian Association of Nigeria. And President Muhammad Buhari has condemned the killing of an official of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Adamar State, Lawan Andimi, by Boko Haram militants, describing it as cruel, inhuman, and deliberately provocative. President Buhari is also condoling with the Christian community all over Nigeria, the government of the people of Adamar State, and the bishop's family over the laws. He is assured that the terrorists will continue to pay a heavy price for their actions and would comprehensively be defeated by Nigeria's armed forces. That's another news update for this hour. Let's take a break and see what the weather will look like today. Okay, now today is Wednesday, January 22nd. Wow, January is moving really fast. Mm, and uh, we have the newspaper headlines for you right now. We have the Punch newspaper starting us off. And we have this headline. It says, Operation... Amoteko. Presidency, governor's meeting called off. Southwest holds rallies. Villa meeting holds Thursday. Police stop protests in Lagos. Shoinka slams Balaribe over anti Amoteko comment. And it also says here, we mustn't remain silent to please oppressors, says Atiku. At the top of the page there, it says PFAs invest 7.40 trillion naira in federal government securities infrastructure. Subsidy may rise as fuel marketers demand higher margins. Can laments AI protests as Boko Haram executes Adamawa cleric. Federal government wants high profile looters extradited, according to Magu. Meanwhile, Lassa fever kills two in Kano doctors, uh, two Kano doctors rather, uh, Ondo death toll rises. Supreme Court upholds autumn Finitri victories. Uh, moving straight to the bottom of the page here, bottom left, three herdsmen arraigned for destroying Ikiti farms with cows. And finally, stakeholders raised 29 member panel to resolve Quara Saraki's dispute. That's what we have on the cover of the punch. Yeah, we've got the vanguard here. And uh, with the headline Pro Amotekun rallies in uh, Rock Southwest states. Protesters hit Akure, Undo, uh, Adoikiti, uh, Abelkuta, and Ibado. Police barricade rally venue in Lagos. Outfit begins operations in Oyo this week. Uniforms, logistics ready. And there's a photo story to support that headline there. And peaceful solidarity rally held um, by the Nigerian Association of the National Association of Nigerian Students, OPC, and the rest of them. And then also, a few, a few other stories. Uzo Dima versus Ihedioha. Nine lawmakers defect to APC give reasons. You can find that story on page 15. Fury as Boko Haram beheads 
can cheer in Adamawa. It's a really, really um, horrific story there. And Nigeria, UK investors seal 153 billion Naira commercial deals. Destruction of rice farm, three herdsmen docked in Ikiti. And finally, showing Kafle's Balari Musa over Operation Amotekun. And that's what we have on the cover of the Vanguard. We have the Nation newspaper here coming up next. It says Amotekun. No going back. <clears throat> Rallies rock southwest states. And as you can see in the photo stories, large crowds there. Uh, it says here, the midwives of Amotekun have repeatedly acknowledged that theirs is only a contribution towards a crisis of escal escalating proportions. Other states should be encouraged to emulate, not misread, such initiatives. Uh, that's a quote from Shoyinka there. Moving to the top of the page, top left, Ibado Obas. We've not settled with Olubado, our crowns intact. In the middle there, it says, Dezani, Kuku, uh, Olojeme, top EFCC watch list. Uh, 14th of February is anti-graft day, by the way. Uh, it also says just below the masthead there, 29-man panel to mediate in Kwara government Saraki family land dispute. That's what we have on the cover of The Nation. Yeah, we've got the Daily Sun here with the headline, Governors have no power to sack local government chairman, the federal government says, and declares caretaker committee unconstitutional. APC, PDP in verbal war over order. And uh, up here, Emo Deputy Speaker, Minority Leader resign as three PDP, two ABGA, two AA lawmakers defect to APC. And over here, Iliwa Land, family drags Obasanjo's brother, wife to court over trespass. And trouble for 18 uh, runaway high profile looters. They will be repatriated soon, uh, says EFCC boss. Uh, outrage as Boko Haram kills can leader, beheads pastor. Uh, Buhari, killers will pay for their actions. Uh, pro Amotekun rallies shake southwest states. Police, others abort action in Lagos. And there's a story here. Lassa fever kills 16 in Ondo. That story is on page 39. And uh, we have photo stories also on the cover of the Daily Sun this morning. Amotekun Solidarity Walk, uh, several uh, states there from Oyo to other states, Ondo and the rest of them, on the cover of the Daily Sun. We have the Nigerian Tribune here, and the major headline is this, Boko Haram's murder of Khan Chairman, Amnesty International, Khan Takul Buhari Security Chiefs. Execution provocative, says Buhari. Moving swiftly to the top of the page there, an interesting story, Oxford Dictionary adds Okada, Tokumbo, Bukateria, Damfo, and 22 other Nigerian English words to the dictionary, mm. uh, including nice. Barbing Salon, Gist, Emba Monts, uh, Flag Off, Guba, and Agrik. They've all been added. <laughs> interesting, yeah. very interesting there. I'll be checking the latest editions of Oxford Dictionary for those words. Yeah, we'll probably talk about that a little later on as well. Supreme Court ho upholds autumn, Finitri's elections. EFCC is set to repatriate 18 high-profile looters, according to Magu. And finally, how middle-aged stress, economic challenges make men prone to depression, stroke, and suicide. That's what we have on the Nigerian Tribune. Yeah, we've got this day here. Uh, with the headline, Boko Haram's killing of Khan chairman provocative, uh, says Buhari. Insurgents uh, reject 50 million naira ransom offer. Group blames federal government for murder of Andini. And solidarity protests in southwest over Amotekun. Police stop rally in Lagos. And up here, Nigeria, UK investors signed 153.4 billion naira trade deals. And Supreme Court retains autumn, Fintiri, in office that story is on page five and uh, we have on the cover of this day this morning a photo story uh, talking about the acting chairman of the efcc ibrahim magu and former cross river state governor mr donald duke during an award of distinction to the chairman 
on Sunday. That's what we have on the cover of this day. And indeed, that's all we have time for with the headlines in this hour. I'm going to take a quick break and be back with the traffic updates. Welcome back. Now we are about to give tips on the best route for you this morning to get to your destination faster. As always, we encourage that you help other road users by dropping relevant traffic situation reports on all our social media pages using the hashtag WakeUpNigeria. Okay, so this morning I decided to try a totally different route. So we're going to start our journey from Maryland bus stop to CMS bus stop. Now, if you're taking this route, lucky you, it's going to take you approximately 45 minutes. I know it's a bit, it's a bit much, but I mean, it's not that bad this morning. Okay, so starting off from Maryland bus stop itself. Now, from there, we have um, free-flowing traffic, thankfully. But just after you pass Maryland Mall, there's slight traffic at that point. Now, you might want to avoid the service lane and just go to the main um express lane because if you do take the service lane that's going to be that's going to take you an hour um, an hour and one minute so i don't think you want to take that route now after that after you pass um the maryland mall we have um free flowing traffic thankfully it goes freely as long as you avoid the service lane yes you will experience free, free flowing traffic now you pass um ilukweju and just shortly after Ilukweju exits, there's slight traffic that goes all the way to Jibowu. Um, but just after that, I think that's because there's a lot of bus, um, motor parks, uh, sorry, a lot of cars, um, people traveling at that point. So, you know, there's a lot of traffic at that point. So, but after that, it's um, free flowing, thankfully. But then again, we have... Um, Pockets of traffic here and there. Now, I just did take, took an alternative, but for people who are actually taking the service lane, there's thick traffic at that point. Thick traffic all the way through to, um, I'm trying to get what point. Okay, so we have, um, okay, um, this is Akintola, Akintola Street. It seems to be like a popular point. But then now you might want to go off and reconnect at Pardon if me if I don't get this right, Fadeyi Street. Yes, now if you reconnect at that point, it brings you back to where we have the popular ABC transport and then it's freer and you, that, that's pretty much bringing you back to um, Jibou. Now through Oju Elegba, everywhere is free, thankfully, but when you pass stadium, now there's thick traffic from that point to Ikbori. Um, but when you come down towards the Echo Bridge, when you pass, um, yes, Ikbori Market, just after that point from uh, Eco Bridge. It's free flowing. So if you're around Stadium, Surulere Axis, you might want to just head out now because I know in another 15 20 minutes it just might not be the same story. But now, as you approach a Pogba, there's thick traffic at that point. It eases up at some point, picks up again, eases up. So it's more like pockets of traffic here and there. But when you um, get so um, when you get through to the UBA axis, it begins to ease up. So I usually just advise that at this point, you might want to come off if you're using like a major bus transportation and just take a keke because that might actually help you navigate through easily. Let's check if you and me and City have any updates for me. Yeah, just a few updates here uh, very quickly. I'll just take them on traffic butter. Um, travel advisory, <laughs> I like that. Uh, a tanker broke down at VGC roundabout. So that is causing a lot of traffic. I mean, you can just imagine what this morning is going to look like for many people. Yeah. A whole tanker breaking down. And you know, because it's petrol, people are trying to avoid yeah. avoid where the tanker is. So they give it even more space than, than they would as usual. So it's really tight right now. Uh, this was 16 minutes ago. So please, uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's any alternative route in that area. Um, not many, uh, not many, because yeah. the first alternative route is around Chevron, heading behind. Exactly. Uh, so, so, and yeah. it might interest you to know that the word Aja is trending on Twitter right now yeah, because, because of this traffic. It's really bad. So I, yeah, it's, it's happening right now. Yeah. Several. So a, a lot of people are also reporting it. It's causing serious mm -hmm. traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said we had to use the VGC roundabout. Uh, before linking uh, back to the main road. So a lot of people are also doing 
a U-turn. Uh, well, not just the mm -hmm. U-turn, taking the one-way lane. Yeah, a back So that so they, they have to split the lane in half because it's just totally blocked, that exit wow. uh, and that entrance as well. So that, uh, in fact, that's sev several people are talking about that across mm -hmm. across, uh, across this, this platform. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's saying, oh, th this tanker broke down and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. So they're calling on LASMA, calling on the LCC mm -hmm. uh, company to help out with that. I don't know if you have mm -hmm. updates. With it's you. the same. It's the same. Petrol tanker broke down at the VGC intersection, completely blocking the road completely. Aja people, the Lord is your strength. Brace up. So people are saying, call your boss, tell them you can't make it to work today. Um, the, there's also some information uh, about people taking one way, which is also a little dangerous yeah. um, because people are not sure why people are taking one way but the traffic goes all the way back to i think abraham adesonya is at right now um that, that's, so uh, that's, that's really far so and it's because it's petrol that people mm. are just scared to yeah, go to in go that close. direction to go mm. close but yeah that that's uh that's the major update right now uh, mm. uh, regarding traffic so obviously yeah. the rest of the road will be free after that yeah mm -hmm. thank you very much yomi and titi so just to give people like exa exact information for people going from Aja to Boni Cantonment. So from Abramadisaya to Aja is actually free, but from Aja Market now all the way to VGC has thick traffic. So if you are considering taking the VGC routes, surprisingly, it's not actually better. So you might want to stay on the express because it's going to take you an hour, 18 minutes to get to Boni Cantonment. But if you take the VGC um, area, it's going to take you with, it has um, 10 minutes extra traffic. But it good for good to know that just after the VGC Welcome Center, it's actually free flowing traffic so if you could actually just exercise a little patience or you i'm going to suggest this even though it's funny you might just want to come down and walk if you're not driving your car and just after you pass the vgc it's free flowing just pockets of traffic at chevron pockets of traffic at idado agungi it gets thick at agungi all the way through to ikate i don't know what's causing the traffic at this point but i can see it thick from all from um agungi to the second roundabout, but I can see an alternative option here. So you might want to take from the second roundabout to just connect to Oniru, go to v, um, enter um, VI and just navigate from there. Um, that's it for traffic updates for now. I'm mm. going to be joining you, Titi and Yomi, to know what's up and about in Lagos. Mm. I was actually really surprised that the word Aja was trending. Yeah. Uh, and that's like a word that never really trends uh, and it has about 6,000 tweets already this morning right I, now I think people are just very upset that yeah um, what seems what would have seemed like a normal day mm. when you wake up in the morning yeah. and then suddenly mm. it's just uh, truncated mm. by, by yeah. major traffic speaking of words yeah the Oxford dictionary yes interesting um, the Oxford dictionary has added 22 new words mm. in Nigerian English. So I studied English in, in Unilag and there's actually a course called Nigerian English. Mm. Okay. And there are some terms that have just become a lot more common because they're used in Nigeria. But, well, I guess because the population is quite large. Yeah, so the, large by, by comparison, people. so when you look at yeah. um, Nigeria, 200 million people, mm -hmm. by comparison to the world population, exactly. we have a, you know, quite a good percentage. Quite a chunk, yeah. Yeah, quite a chunk of the world population, yeah. And then you have words like Okada, Tokumbo, yeah. uh, Bukateria, Downfall uh, being added to the dictionary. Yeah. But there's some other really interesting ones, like uh, Keleg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was waiting for the real uh, Yeah. yeah. So Keleg, Keleg. Keleg is now in the... Uh, chop, chop. Yeah, <laughs> chop, chop. Yeah. Actually, chop, chop, not chop, chop. Chop, chop. <laughs> chop, chop. Yeah, so that, that's in there as well. I can see yeah. Agrik here. Why is Agrik? Agrik. Agrik, like Agrik chicken. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're, Agric. Co you're connecting. You're okay. connecting, yeah. <laughs> And, so, um, so and when you say when you say things like a Greek science, it, it's mm. actually not. It, it was an international la language. Like no, internationally, people wouldn't say a Greek science; they would say agricultural science. Yeah. Oh, so so uh, and then mm -hmm. I'm seeing some other words here. Mm -hmm. Next so, tomorrow, have you seen next tomorrow? Next tomorrow. Next tomorrow. <laughs> buka. The word buka is now in the dictionary. It's not yeah. even just buka. It's bukateria. It's bukateria, and, and then buka. there's buka. Oh, okay. And then uh, the origin of the words, though. Um, yeah. Apparently, it's uh, the word buka. <laughs> Uh, is borrowed from Hausa and Yoruba. Hausa. Uh, and Hausa, well. Hauser. Hausa. 
And from 1972, <laughs> the word buka has been used uh, uh, to make yeah. reference to small stalls where you can get food. Food, yes. And now cafeteria has been broken into two and the two words put together in the dictionary as yeah. bukateria. And then there are some other words that's here. Barbing salon. Yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. So barber was a word, yeah. but yeah. to barb your hair was not a word. Yeah. Yeah, to so, barb your hair. Yeah, so, yeah. You, so yeah. you had barber, but now you have barbing salon. Mm. <laughs> you have buka, you have bukateria. Chop. Then, yeah. So there's chop, the <laughs> verb, and then there's chop, chop. Chop, chop. <laughs> That's and, then, chop, chop. and then there's downfall. Then, then to eat money. Yeah. To eat money the, as a... As a <laughs> As a term, as a as a phrase. As a yes, phrase. We all know that. Ember months. I didn't know that ember, ember months, months were was not in, was Nigerian. Yeah. It is Nigerian. Ember. I mean, the months so where you Welcome get to, to the ember months. months. Yeah. You pray a lot. Okay, so um. flag off. <laughs> oh my goodness. We just say stuff here in Nigeria. Okay, so flag off. Yeah, flag off. Gist. I like gist. the word. So gist I didn't apparently. Know gist was in Nigeria. Yeah. So I have been hearing. I even heard it on the international e channel. Yeah. And it's become such a big thing. Mama. Okay, so gist. The gist, gist of it. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So in, in, in old English, or well, mm. not in old English, mm. in the regular English, mm. it used to be uh, the gist of an issue. So the crux mm. of an issue is mm. the gist of an issue. Yeah. But in Nigeria, when... I, I have gist for ah. you. Ah! Hey. When you have gist for someone, that, hey. that's, uh, you know, that's the noun. A piece of gossip. So that's now, the noun. It's so, now a noun. Yeah. Oh, there's the there's noun, Seth. there's a gist noun, and then there's the so gist, the piece of gist, a, a piece of a piece of gist that is, 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 a, noun. is a noun, and then to gist <laughs> is yeah. the verb. They were gisting. They were gisting. And that's the verb. We gisted about it now. Uh, Do you remember that gist? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Then yeah, my then, best. That last one, best. Guba. Guba, yeah. What was Guba? I didn't know Guba was. Nigerian. Okay, well, gubernatorial. Mm -hmm is normal english yeah but when you say guba elections yeah. that's yeah. nigerian wow oh, there's so, one? but now it's in the dictionary so it's wow. english so they're it's my best in all yeah safe because i use that word a lot you say you say you say they helped is it so that's that that's it self s e f s e f not self wow like when they use you self how do you do you ah nice how do you do you self very nice so these words are now mm. officially English words. Mm. So don't so, call me out. Nigerian English words. So don't worry about it. All those, yeah. all those um, overly, yeah. overly uh, conscious, uh, uh, your uh, and conscious in your life. <laughs> <laughs> so, but all the, you know that there are Twitter activists that just mm. go after people yeah, for like their yeah, English. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not a, so, I'm not a Twitter but the, the issue now. Way. So you need to be sure, you need to be sure and not because it's not in the Oxford Dictionary, go and use it for your jam or your exams. You might not pass. It yet. might take, it take, it it might take a year a while. or two yeah, for um, before, just, before it's included yeah. but in imagine, the jam. It just mm. came to my mind. Imagine mm. you're writing jam and you just see options. Eh? You say. You, you too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, if you okay, pick, so don't you say. say for. <laughs> so there, there's, there's uh, you know, there's colloquial English yeah. as well. So even when you're writing an essay, yeah. you shouldn't yeah. use mm. uh, that certain yes. terms you should mm. use, even if they're English language. Uh, there's English actually language a term, you know, so in Nigeria, you sleep on a bed. But ab abroad, you sleep in a bed. Mm. Yeah. So because you actually get into the duvet, you get yourself. Yeah, so, so it's a transliteration so from your about exactly. ori bed. Ori bed, exactly. Which so you're on, on bed. On, yeah. So this is Nigerian. This is a real thing. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, yeah? I mean, I'm just thinking out loud. Imagine if, well, you know, sometimes you're talking and then you, you argue with your friend and you're like, oh, that's American English. Mm. Oh, that's British English. Yeah. So now we can well, also say, oh, that's Nigerian, Nigerian English. Exactly. No, it's, it's the standard. I mean, there's international. There's always yeah. been. There's, there's yeah. In, the, yeah. So there's AE, there's BE, mm -hmm. and then there's NE, mm -hmm. and then several other mm -hmm. uh, languages. I'm going to search for that textbook. I have a textbook called Nigerian English. I'll bring it to the office one day. Okay, you teach us. Whoop. <laughs> taking a quick break. You have to head to the Puka. Yes. I'll be right back. For breakfast. After this. Oh, hi. <laughs> As a new mom, exercising can be the least of things you want to add to your busy schedule. Today, Blossom Fitness and I are going to be teaching you a few fun ways, you know, to get that body back after childbirth. Hello, Blossom. Hi, Emma. How are you so doing? Awesome. Thanks there to you, go. right? <laughs> there is more work to be done with your nutrition than exercise. They don't understand, and this is why. So when you eat foods that have a lot of residue, what we call residue, high foods, then it goes in your tummy and it sits there for two or three days, and your tummy is bulky, and you're wondering, 
Why are these crunches not working? Because of what's inside. Now let's get to the muscle. Because at the end of the day, you need to work your muscle to have that definition that we call the six pack. Um, so let's get to it. You're going to lie down, flat, flex your knees, your hands behind your head, and you're going to just look, pick one point in, on the ceiling, just pick one point on the ceiling, straight up. Because I don't want to see this, I see people doing this a lot, that's not what we want. We want you to crunch. Up, let's go, up. Up. Inhale as you go up, and exhale as you come down. Do not flex your neck. So now we've worked the upper part of your abs. We're going to work the lower part. So let's have your two hands in a diamond like this and then put it under your butt. Your knees still slightly flexed. Make sure your back is touching the floor because if you move your back off the floor, you're going to enjoy yourself. Are we ready? Yes. Let's go. Up. And down. Up. And down. So now we're going to work on our oblique muscles. These muscles are wrapped all the way around. Let's go. We're going to do what we call bicycle crunches. We're going to be lifting ourselves and hitting our elbows with our knees. Let's go, up, alternate, other way, alternate, other way, other way, two more, last one. What I want to see is the right form. I want your elbows down, shoulder width apart, I need your elbows to be directly under your shoulders. Hold your tummy in. You start by holding for 30 seconds and then you increase to one minute. <laughs> Three, two, and one. The fun way to work your abs. We're going to do this choreography, this song. We're going to crunch. This is called standing crunches. The fun, the fun part, yes. you know, the, the, the fun aspect of it, yes. which is more, which is better. Okay, I will call it better, but it, it's easier. It's easier, and um, when you're having fun, you work out more. Yes. Because you love what you're doing. Yes. If someone is forcing you to do something, you don't want to do it. And um, tomorrow when they say go to the gym, you're like, oh, I don't um, want to go. But when yes. you think you're going to go there and have fun, mm. why not? So go into the world and have a fun workout. Thank yes. you so much, Blossom. <laughs> Thank Bye. you for having me. Bye. <laughs>
Hello and good morning. Welcome to the second hour of the show. There's still quite a bit lined up for you. <laughs> After seeing MM's workouts yeah. uh, a few minutes ago, I'm just wondering. Feel yeah. out of breath? <laughs> she didn't really do anything. We know. I mean, we saw it now. She... <laughs> Whoa, really? Anyway, it's your number one breakfast show ah, on Because television. MM is not here to defend herself, have you? Don't Wake worry. Up, Nigeria. My name is Yomi Owope. <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to steer clear when the atom bomb that is MM lands on you. Yeah, uh, we'll probably we, see you later. <laughs> we'll be having quite a lineup for your viewing pleasure today. But remember, you need to stream live so you can see him or rather see her tackle him later. Yeah. That's tvcentertainment.tv and of course on Facebook at TVC Connect. Yeah, of course, uh, you can send in your comments as well. Uh, use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on all our social media platforms. We also have an app. Just need to remind you that you can download it on Android and iOS. Please watch us from anywhere in the world on your mobile devices with that app. Yeah, joining us this morning, uh, Wednesday edition of the show is Nathaniel, mm. our chef. And of chef course, Nathaniel. with uh, TT, oh, Hi. talk by in the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> chef Nathaniel has something really interesting for breakfast this morning. You don't want to go anywhere. Oh, okay. Looking forward to it. He always to. does. He's just like, you know, great things come in interesting packages. Mm. You know, I don't want to say small packages, but I just did. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. So we're starting uh, with our first musical performance this morning coming from Afro Cool, a recording artist and producer, Dash. Open your windows, open your windows, shower your blessings on me. And on relationship today, we'll be talking about something quite common in many relationships conflict resolution in marriages with marriage counselor Ola Bisi Folari. On nutrition, Susan Ajibadi will be here again. And this time she's going to be sharing uh, the nutritional benefits of fats and oil. For interior decor trends to look for in 2020, you need to stick around for our home makeover segment. We have some tips to beautify your home, office, or any other space this 2020. And finally, we're going to be having a fast rising Nigerian comedian, actor, and compare Bukumi, popularly known as Preacher, with us for a chat. Yes. Quite a day lined up for us, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, it's going to be a full show. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our relationship and also nutrition and you know, a bunch of things as well. Mm. Yeah, um, for, for nutrition, you know, a lot of people don't understand the fact that there is healthy fat. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people just avoid fat in general, not knowing that some of the things they're doing to avoid fat, they're actually <laughs> inviting That's, yeah. fat. Um, so, you know, there are different, many different types of diets and all that. Uh, we, we actually are supposed to start something very soon yeah, top there we are should we, we are. tell the world what we're going to no, be they doing should wait for they should wait it. they should wait something for it. something to do with diets so. yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we're supposed to do something interesting and we're hoping that you will be standing by to join us on this journey mm. we're not going to give too many details but you never know if but there we, might be something we'll, in it for you we'll give um, mm a run for her money yes so Yes, <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan. If you didn't watch MM's package, you need to go, <laughs> you need to go back and see it. <laughs> MM, MM's um, mm. it, her gym experience was like mm. it's like weight loss, a chilled weight loss experience, mm. like her Very exercise. <laughs> yep. oh, okay. So, so now, so I, so I, as much as I agree that it was a little chilled, um, I have to say that when women are trying to lose that belly fat, yeah, that journey is a continuous one. So yeah. even if you're chilling for now. As long as you continue, yeah, you will get somewhere. Very you true. Know? Um, like the, especially the, the the tummy area. True. I can remember one fact that I'll never forget: yeah. the fact that I couldn't feel any muscles in that area at all. Oh, so wow. you know that whole action of um, you're trying to hold your breath or hold your tummy in. I couldn't feel any of those muscles anymore. I had oh, no wow. control over them once I had the kids. So yeah, so it takes a while to firm up. Yeah, and, yeah, I had no control. Like, it was just there. <laughs> it was just there. Like, it existed, but it was just not connected to my brain <laughs> for some reason. Um, so it's, it's a journey. and It's uh, the joys of motherhood. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Uh, you look at the children and you smile, and you look at your tummy and you're like... <laughs> so I think, I think there's a lot of consistency that is also required, mm. yeah. whether male or female. I mean, yesterday, 
uh, I was here listening to the radio and you know they were talking about men and belly fat. You mm. know, people don't know that men have that struggle mm. as they do. well. Mm. They yeah, do. men men have that that, oh, that wow. struggle as well. So some of them maybe as a result of heavy drinking or eating late and mm. things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's a challenge for many people. But, yeah, Too many wraps is, of pounded yam, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> consistency is key yeah. in ensuring that you get rid of that belly fat. I don't have that problem, but... Yeah, yeah. please. We know. Yeah. We, we, we can, can see. see. <laughs> <laughs> Be yeah. like Yomi. The, the news it's, it's is be okay. ready for us. Ibrahim is on standby. Right, welcome to the news. Cases of Lassa fever are on the rise. 84 cases have been recorded in Ondo State this year and 16 persons have also died. State, of epidemiology, uh, State epidemiologist St Stephen Fagwemi disclosed this during a meeting with Governor Luaro Timi Delu and local government chairman in Akure. According to him, the 16 patients died uh, because their cases had reached an advanced stage because they were brought to hospitals. He adds that 47 people who are on admission are responding to treatment, while 21 others have already been discharged. In the first two weeks, of, until now, like we are less than three weeks, we have reported 84 from five cases in Ondo State. And then we are approaching the season. The, the peak of time we expect last fever to occur is yet to come, it's around February, March. So the implication for this is our treatment center, they are already overwhelmed to even get bed space for patients. You need to face an important challenge now. And unfortunately, this is, this is probably not an area you can make money. Because uh, really it's only where you can make money that you always have to work. And at least five persons died in a suspected case of Lassa fever in Kano State. Four of the victims are medical professionals and fifth is a pregnant woman who underwent cesarean section at Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital. Our correspondent Ibrahim Isa brings us up to speed on this development. Reasons for the death of five people, including four medical professionals and a patient, is yet to be confirmed. The Kano State Ministry for Health says it has since taken blood samples and has been transmitted for investigation, which would take about 48 hours. Only upon completion of investigation would the ministry conclude that Lassa was responsible for the death of doctors and a patient. Amini Kano Teaching Hospital, where the incident occurred, has since taken measures during its stakeholders' meeting that contact tracing is presently being undertaken. The hospital is currently sensitizing its staff. Similarly, the Nigerian Medical Association in Kano State expressed sadness over the loss of lives of its members due to suspected disease. We are waiting for the result of the investigation, and as soon as they are available, we'll bring you more updates on the matter. And the Minister of Health will brief the media today on the development. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari has condemned the killing of an official of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Adama State, Lawan and Dimi, by Boko Haram militants, describing it as cruel, inhuman and deliberately provocative. President Buhari is also condoling with the Christian, uh, Christian community all over Nigeria, the government and people of Adama State and the bishop's family over the laws. He has assured them that the terrorists will continue to pay a heavy price for their actions and would comprehensively be defeated by Nigeria's armed forces. Outside Nigeria, the impeachment trial of U.S. President Donald Trump is taking place in the Senate with strict rules in place. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer followed Republican Mitch McConnell on the floor to make the Democratic case for rules that allow uh, more witnesses to testify. A said a trial needs witnesses to be fair and that a trial without evidence is not a trial but a cover-up. Schumer uh, said that if Republicans were to block witness testimony, it would allow future presidents to commit impeachable crimes with impunity. That's the news update for this hour. See you again. Here with me, Chef Nathaniel of Natido's Cuisine. Very, very nice spread that we have in front of us this morning. I'm seeing chicken, uh, cheese, onions, onions, carrots. carrots, coriander. Oh, this is coriander. Okay, that's what. Okay, that's what coriander looks like. When you say coriander, it sounds like a powder or something. Uh, bell peppers, different colors. Yeah. Eggs. Eggs. 
olive oil. Olive oil, bread, of course. Yeah, Vav is like all seasoning spice. Okay, all seasoning spice. Suya spice. Suya spice. Okay, yeah. so now, um, what are we making? So we're making quesadilla. Quesadilla. Kind of like a Mexican kind of dish. Okay, Mexican yeah. dish. Uh, okay. Um, what he's making is, is because we're going to use a lot of cheese. Okay, lo a lot of cheese. What kind of cheese is that? This um, cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese, okay, yes. so, so it's just a great taste. Okay, so it looks exciting, it looks healthy. I like this. Yeah. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you know I would I would be interested in uh, on you know for breakfast. Sure. And I'm seeing on the olive oil here. Olive oil yes. has this nice greenish hue to it. Yeah. Very nice. And so this particular part of chicken is the chicken breast, right? Yes. Okay. Skinless and boneless. Skinless and boneless, so. just the way I like it. And so uh, what's the first thing that we're gonna do? We're gonna start with the chicken. Okay, so we'll start with the chicken yes, and marinate it a little bit tidbits. with the all season spice and yes. the suya spice. So, so that's going in there. And the so just tell me when you need help. Okay. Uh, so we're going to allow that to eat a bit. Heat up a little bit, okay. Yeah. So, so, so the olive oil, so the first thing that happens is the olive oil goes into yes. the pan yep. uh, to heat up and then we season the chicken. Then it starts with the chicken. Okay. We are starting with the chicken first because we want the like the seasoning and the um, aroma to fill the bell peppers and the right, egg. right. So, okay, so we we'll so start with the chicken that first. Flavor. Okay, so but what's going into the pan first? Just the chicken. Then after we're done, we're gonna fry the, the egg and throw in the eggs as well. The bell peppers. Okay, so I'm, I'm also curious about what you're gonna do with the bread. Uh, and of course, every other thing that we're going to be doing this morning. Yes. So, are we breaking the eggs and then adding that? Yes, we are not doing to the it's the chicken, chicken. Okay, it's on its own. Okay, it's on its own. Okay, and then at what point does the cheese go in? When we're about uh, filling, packing everything together. All right. Okay, so guys, it's casadilla. That's what that's what it's called. We're going all the way to Mexico this morning, and uh, we're going to be bringing up the ingredients later on. And please follow us very closely on the show today because we're going to be doing something really, really special. And we're taking a break and we'll be back with more very shortly. Yes, so our very first performance for this morning, we have Samuel David Chinoyere, a 25-year-old recording artist, songwriter and music producer who describes his sound as Afro-cool. Now, he began recording professionally in 2015, but recently released his body of work titled A Different Shine in November 2019. Now, he is about to perform something special for us this morning. So tell me about A Different Shine. Yes. So um, the project was to bring out a different shine, that is a different sound. Okay. I wanted to sound different. I okay. always, I always, I always wish to sound different. I want to be different from every other artist. Okay. So yeah. when you started your career, did you sound like every other artist? I didn't, but at some point in my in my career, I was trying to sound like every other person. Okay. To get people to, to listen to listen me. to you. Okay. But it wasn't working actually. Okay. So what so are you performing for us this morning? Windows. 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 So tell yeah. me a bit about Windows. Okay. Um, windows was um, is a song I wrote. Okay. To it's like to get God to give me a clear direction on where to go. Okay. Yeah, so I released it um, on Saturday, um, 18th. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's fresh. Yes. And we're so going to get it. Like a premiere. Okay. So it's just like hot, um, fresh, hot, hot. fresh <laughs> bread. They give yeah. it to us hot, hot. Yes. You know what? So now let's listen to this different sound yeah. and let's see what your Afro cool is about. All right then. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello. Lord, I'm so scared and confused. Please show me the road. And I know that I'm not perfect I have a feeling people are connecting with that particular song. Shall I your blessings on me? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for that one. We're moving swiftly along now. We're joined by certified relationship coach and marriage counselor, BC Folaring. Today, we're going to be talking about conflict resolution in marriages and, of course, relationships. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, ma'am, for having me back. All right, then. So, a conflict is something that is almost um well we say it's common but how common it is is you know still remains to be seen uh and a lot of people have found ways to deal with it but for those that are probably watching right now and there's some sort of conflict happening in their homes right now 
What sort of advice would you give them towards resolving it? Okay, first thing I'd like um, everyone listening to know is um, conflict is almost natural, something, I won't, um, something that occurs. It's, so, it's not something you can do without. Mm -hmm. So the issue is not whether conflict will arise, but how we resolve the conflict. Okay. So um, I'm going to narrow it down talking about the home between a couple, a husband and a wife. First things first, I think every couple should understand that they are both on the same team. Okay. Your spouse, your husband, your wife is not the enemy and is not the devil, except in some few cases where mm. a spouse acts that way. So you need to understand that when you're bringing an argument, you want to resolve a conflict, you're not, per se, talking against somebody on another team. So let's say, Mr. and Mrs. Taiwo, mm. you are on team Taiwo. So when you're presenting your argument, you're not coming. The goal is not to win an argument. The goal is to fight for the right of that marriage to exist, okay. to keep thriving. Okay. That's the first thing you need to know. Second thing um, that you need to know when you're resolving conflict is there are certain words you shouldn't use. Okay. All right, so um, you want to pass across, don't use words like I. Mm. I'll call them deflectors. Mm. When you want to say there's something you did, you're always doing this. Instead of saying you, use I, as in mm. I, feel, I feel beaten down each time you shout. Mm. I, there's a certain way I feel when you do this, mm. as opposed to you are always doing this, you're always doing this, because using those kind of words puts the other party on the defenses. Okay. You also don't want to use words like you are always doing this, you never, that is such a tone of finality. Okay. okay, so that gives the person the impression, oh, are you saying since we've been married, I've never done this, which most times might not be correct, it's just that they often do it. So avoiding such words will help you get your message across faster. The other person has not built a wall of defense like, Shut down. Mm. Another thing you want to look at when resolving conflicts is um, deal with the issue, not the personality. Attack the issue, not the personality, because we do that a lot. Okay. That's why I said you don't use words like you. Instead, deflect. Mm. Say, I feel this so way. So you're saying treat it on a case-by-case -case basis? Definitely. Not long-term issues? Yes. Yeah, so okay. that, that's, like, um, that's like hitting below the bed when you keep bringing up past issues. You know, you're, we're dealing with an issue now, but you're stringing it to something that's happened mm. in the past. No, deal with issues as they happen per time basis. Okay. Yes. Then another thing you want to learn how to do is to effectively, that's what we don't do a lot of time as couples, you effectively communicate what it is that is the grouse that's making you angry as opposed to just um, shouting and you're not making any point okay, for women. So that effective communication you're yeah. talking about now, um, obviously we're talking about using words yes. to pass a message across yes uh and sometimes i feel like there are some couples that especially if they come from different places different areas or they grew up in different from different backgrounds definitely they might not have a language that is actually you know uh making sure that those messages are communicated mm -hmm. so do you think there's a, a, any other way to pass these messages across well, like you, you've already said, we come from different backgrounds, we've been shaped by different worldview and all of that. So you want, you want to make your partner understand what it is that gets at you each time they do a certain kind of things. I'll tell women, it's not all the time that emotions and tears will bring your brains to the table. What I mean by that, if you're talking with a man, they're more logical. You probably will get your husband's attention if you've had your facts, you know, stated out in your mind before you come presenting to him as opposed to shouting, crying and throwing tantrums. Okay. So bring your brains to the table, bring your points for a lady, for a woman. You're more likely to get across to your husband. He's more likely to listen. Oh, okay. This thing she says, he might not agree on the spot, but mm. he probably will think about it as opposed to just coming and fighting. You're not going to be making any headway that way. Okay. And then when resolving conflicts, be quick to um, apologize and also receive apology. You know, it's one thing for one spouse to apologize. Another thing for the other to say, I mean, I'm, I'm just not accepting it. Mm because this is, how, this is how it works. When you are, when you are apologizing, the person that apologizes is not, is not necessarily the person that is wrong. Okay. It just means I value this relationship, I value what we share above my ego. Okay. That I'm apologizing does not necessarily mean I'm wrong. It just means I value this relationship more than my ego at this point. And so when a spouse is willing to go that length to apologize, even when they are not the wrong party, you should be willing to also accept it as in knowing fully well that, oh, mm. not necessarily you know, this person being wrong. Okay, I want to make reference to sources of conflict that are recurrent. Okay. So if, for instance, you have uh, conflict with financial issues or conflict with in-laws issues, and it's a constant recurrent source of conflict, what would you advise? It means you guys haven't really sat down to talk about the nitty 
gritty and come to a resolution. Okay. So you might need to, whoever is their grief party, you might need to sit down. Let me assume it's the, the wife that has issues with in-laws coming, not helping out in the house, but always eating the food and leaving plates dirty. Mm. You want to pick that up with your husband. There is something about timing and resolution. Okay. We need to learn timing. It's not all the time the other party is open to that discussion. So you have to look for a right time and then understand that if it gets heated to a point, you don't have to necessarily continue that conversation at that point. Let tempers, tempers cool out if they have to. Okay. But whenever you're bringing up, make sure you're saying exactly what it is. Don't bring anger to the table. Bring your logic, bring your reasoning. When you do that, then you have to insist that we, moving forward, what are we resolving to do at this point? Okay. When these people come, this is what I expect. I expect that they help out in the house. I, help, I expect that they eat, they have to wash their dishes. Communicate that to your husband and make sure you guys reach a resolution, especially since you want to get a response from him. Make sure he's saying something definite. What about enforcing those new rules that you've put together with your, with your spouse, for instance? Enforcing it to prevent com conflict you know, could be a problem for the spouse. What would you advise in that case? I would advise that um, the spouse receiving that complaint or that grievance should make a mental look. And the person who also brought it, whenever you feel there's a flaw, mm -hmm. you just gently remind, sweetheart, we actually talked about this, you forgot, oh, I'm sorry, I will, you know, work better on it moving forward. Don't always expect a sudden change. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will be gradual and sometimes it will be immediate. You should appreciate that too. Okay, so I, I'm trying to think of um, different types of relationships now. So, for instance, a business relationship, okay. right, um, where two different businesses come together to work on a project. Mm -hmm. um, they often project forward into the future and look out for different sources of conflict and they draw up some kind of agreement. Aforehand. Can this work with marriages and relationships? Hmm. Well, not in such a rigid Form. But yeah, it should work. If you have respect for that union, like I say, you, you, you want this to move forward. The goal is not to win a fight. The goal is to fight for the thriving of this union. Okay. So it can actually work. So you can actually agreement. sit down and look into the future and think about things that could be. Oh, yes. While you're cutting, those are part of what you should be doing. You should be projecting. That's mm. why you have like some 12 questions. You really need to sit and answer. Not just, okay, what okay. do we do? They, they will have A, B, C, D to like F if they have to. So. Wow. Wow, different yeah. options. Yeah, so I mean, you, you, how do I say, what's the word? You simulate if this mm. happens. Okay. What do you think we can do about it? You should have those discussions while cutting. I have to say thank you to you once again. I have a feeling someone learned a thing or two today uh, and have a, a few pointers that they jotted down on how to resolve different types of conflict. Uh, we have to wrap it up now. Please visit our social media pages with the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and put your comments right there. We have to take a quick break. Wake Up Nigeria continues after this. All right, welcome back to the kitchen. So uh, things are happening right here, man. We are going all the way to Mexico doing something really, really special. So as you can see, the chicken is nice and brown. So what we did was that we put the seasoning on it right yes and we pan seared it is that what it's called yes pan seared so we like pan seared the chicken and then now it's nice and brown it's golden color and now we are also stir frying the stir vegetables. frying the vegetables so as you can see the different uh, colors of bell peppers are in the pan there being stir fried in the olive oil looking really really nice and juicy and after that uh, so, Chef Nathaniel is going to tell us the next thing that we're going to be doing. I'm seeing that you're putting the bread yes. on, uh, chopping board. on the chopping board there. So, actually, for this meal, yeah. it's actually um, tortilla bread that is being used. Mm -hmm. But because of the show, I want to teach people that in case you don't have that, you can always You can also use, use regular bread. bread. Just go out and buy, and just get buy regular this. bread. Yes, and just uh, use a regular sliced bread. Okay. So, you're going to chop off the edge because we need a flat surface to resemble that of the tortilla. So, so once we do that, then we're now going to we'll roll it and flatten it. Yes. Nice. Just, just chop it off. So once you cut this off, what do you then do with it? You just get rid of it. Yeah, or you can <laughs> use it for whatever you want to. All right, to so I'm also curious what you want to do with the eggs here. Uh, we still have the... 
Yes, that the veggies be. stir frying. Yes. It should be ready. Yes, by just, now. So, then just beat the egg a bit. So does the egg go into this? Yes. Okay, so I can be helping you out with the stir frying over here. So you can just add the egg. So add the egg. Should I stir the egg yes. while it's while it's frying yes, or just yes. let it? Okay. Yes, so let's increase the heat a bit. Yeah, so let me do that while, while you're sorting out the bread on the other side. So while uh, the egg here is frying and I'm bringing up the heat on the burner, Chef Nathaniel is over there trying to ensure that the bread is flattened very nicely. And if we have the ingredients, we can just put it on the screen and uh, you can just take us through what we're uh, doing. Okay, there it is. So, uh, Natito's quesadilla, quesadilla. Right? Yeah. and eggs, carrot, lettuce, olive oil, cinnamon, sliced bread, just or uh, just... tortilla uh, wraps. Italian seasoning, garlic, cheese, onions, tomatoes, bell peppers, and chicken breast. And yeah, so we started with the chicken breast and it's all nice and brown now. And as you can see, I'm doing some hard work over here with the eggs inside the stir fried peppers and onions. So it looks like we're almost done with the, with the sliced bread yes, over there. I'm just going to do a few so I can show people. Okay, so you need to come and supervise these eggs and make sure that I'm doing it, <laughs> doing the right thing. Okay. Because you asked me to stir it, so I'm just making sure that... Uh, so yeah. this is good? So just increase the heat a bit. Yeah. So put, okay, so the make, make it a little bit yes. hotter so that we can, it can probably cook faster. Yeah, so just... Once so keep stirring, right? Yes. Okay. All right, so after this and after flattening the bread, what's the next thing that we're going to be then doing? Then we're going to start with the cheese. We're going to put the cheese on top of the bread. Yeah. Then we'll melt it, add the chicken mm -hmm. and the egg and the bell peppers. Wow. Then add another bread on top then. Very nice, done. very nice. So I'm liking this. Now, you are a pro with uh, breakfast things. Yes. And you have something really, really special that's going to be happening. Uh, very soon, in a matter of weeks, actually. So talk to us about it. Yeah, so I'm actually starting like an online restaurant coming soon. Online restaurant, yeah. very nice. Where so like can, with online deliveries and yes, stuff like that. Yes, online delivery. So if you need like because a special many people have been telling me that yeah, m most of these breakfasts they don't have the opportunity to eat it. They just sit on their screen. So yeah. you know, <laughs> they're gonna have the opportunity to eat it very exactly. soon. Exactly. So when March you see something second. on the show, you can then uh, yes hit them up online. And, and I'm going to be you. having more other recipes. You can check my Instagram page to see more on that. Yeah, that's Natido's, Natido's cuisine. Natido's cuisine. Natido's cuisine yes, right. so you can see some other recipes that I've done on the show. Yeah. And that's so... Very nice, very nice. Very and I heard some great news from you, actually, uh, some recently. You got this Tony Elumelu grant. Yes, yes, very, yes. So you're, not, you're like a rich man now. <laughs> Lots so of dollars. The Tony Elumelu Foundation grant that I applied for last year, 2019. Yeah. And I was among those that, that were selected. That were selected. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. So that's uh, some good progress. So we're going to use that to, to launch yeah, the, the, to online, launch the online, online restaurant. restaurant. Very nice. So you can exciting, check my Instagram page. Things. There'll be more details coming up soon on how everything is going to Yeah. So Natito's Cuisine. So anything you see on the show, if you want to order it, now you can just go online and find them there. So, um, so I like what you're doing over there. You're cutting up the... Chicken breast, yes, which we stir fried, yes, or so which we pan seared. So this looks like it's ready over yes, here. Yes, it's ready. Now. So you can so, just scoop it because I'm going to use the fry pan. All right, so scoop it out. So this is me learning a lot of things right now, <laughs> and uh, very nice. So while that uh, you're getting that chicken ready, and we're also getting the fried eggs in, the bell peppers ready as well. Looks like we're going to be moving over to some nutrition talk. And I'm sure it has something to do with fats and oils. And uh, Tokwa is on standby with Susan. Thank you so much, Yomi. I don't know how I feel about you handling the things in the kitchen, but well, I'm sure we'll be fine. Yes, yeah, so with me is Susan Adebisi Ajibade. Now, she is back on the show, and this time she is going to be sharing with us the nutritional benefits 
of fats and oils. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Hi, Derry. See, I feel like I need <laughs> to have a big book and to just write because these fats and oils, I have never it's a gotten big case, right? Honestly. <laughs> so now I need you to school me. So tell us, we've done proteins, we've done carbohydrates, and yes, now we have fats and we're oils. On fat and oil, yes. all right, it's, it's very essential. Every, you know, classes of food is important to the body. But at the same time, fats could be very dangerous. So I'm just going to go straight to the point by okay. saying there is the healthy fat and the not so healthy fat. The okay, not know? so healthy yeah. fat. Yeah, so they call them the um, uh, monounsaturated fats yeah. and polyunsaturated fats. Those are supposed to be the healthy fats that we can eat. Okay. And there is the trans fat and the saturated fat, which are not so good for the body. body. Okay. But that is not to say we should cut down on all those foods because we need them. But then it is said that we should be careful of how um, we take all those kind of fat okay. all of the time because the consequence is very, very dangerous. Oh, wow. it's, it's, it, could, it could increase your cholesterol level, which okay. is very dangerous. dangerous if, yes. if it's so high, then it, those are the things that leads to uh, things like uh, stroke, yeah. things like type two diabetes yeah. and you know, all of those things. So it is advised that you should cut down on all of those on healthy fat, fats. which are the trans fat okay. or the saturated fats. Okay. Yeah. And so the particular fats that are said as healthy, healthy yes. they are the um, uh, monosaturated fat or the poly, uh, unsaturated fat, fat, rather. Okay. So the kind of foods that you can, that are supposed to say, uh, that has healthy fats That's are it. your avocados. Okay. Your, but, your avocados. But I did read, sorry to cut you, I did read okay. that if you had too much avocados, yeah. it's unhealthy. <laughs> well, there are a lot of school of thoughts okay. about all of these things. You just have to, you know, be well read and choose, uh, make sure that you are not getting yourself confused. Okay. Some people, the school of thought that will tell you that do not eat this is that you, you don't get your brain so confused. Yeah. But one thing I know and I think it's true is that avocado Avocados. has a very, very healthy fats. Okay. If you're eating, if you're, you're on a diet and you're yeah. taking your avocados, you're not doing anything wrong. But there is a place of your body system, how it takes things and all of that. But then avocado is, has a healthy kind of fat. And of yeah. course, um, some healthy uh, kind of fats you can find in your yogurt too. Yeah. Not the yogurt with the um, full fat dairy. You know, that's yeah. why those people that do uh, yogurt and their feed farm kind of, they will advise that you do the Greek yogurt. Yeah. Yes or you do the low fat yogurt. Okay. Now, some people are very confused to think that, okay, what is the difference between uh, okay. low fat yogurt, yogurt and, and ordinary yogurt. yogurt? It's just the process of the milk. You know, yogurt is made of milk. milk yeah. So most time when you're, uh, you're dealing with a low fat yogurt, that means it is made from a milk that has a very low low fat or from a skimmed milk, milk. okay and okay. for the greek yogurt the, the the process of straining it you're straining out all the fat and all the excess sugar oh, that okay. it, that is in it so thereby it's no longer unhealthy okay. for you all right basically so that's now that. we have avocados we have um greek yogurts low fat yogurt yes now in, a, in the normal like now nigerian yes. dishes now what are the what are the foods or what are the things that we can get and store in our for in our kitchens mm. just to know one that particular we're thing that we use that has oh, it's palm oil palm oil you know they 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 are fat they they have fats in them uh, are they granola fats oil are not so for, for 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 palm, palm oil, oil it falls under the category of the trans fat that's the not so yes, healthy not fat. Yes, not so healthy fat. Oh, so that wow. is why you see when people make their, there's, there's the ofada that we do at Splash Greens that, you know, someone say, oh, why is this? There's no, it's not like the normal ofada stew. Ah, there's no oil. Hell, Where yeah. is the oil in this? And I said, wow, if we're preaching healthy living, yes, then we this, have to we have it. to practice it. Less oil and all of that. So, but I must say that it doesn't mean we have to cut out all of these things. They have their other health benefits, benefits as yeah. well. 
Okay, but so just no. the part of the yeah. fact that it is heavy yeah. or fat. fat. So whenever you have the opportunity to use them, use them in the barest minimum mm -hmm. and okay. don't take them all the time. Your fries, frying and all of them, reduce them to the barest minimum. If you can totally stay away from it. Okay. All so right. now when you mentioned fries, something came to mind, even I did have another question. So if you want to make French fries, yeah. Um, oven baking your french fries yes. and frying them with granite oil, which is healthier? Granite oil, of course, oven baking oven them baking or air, air, uh, air, air, frying air frying or whatever without the oil. Okay. It's always, always better okay. without the oil. But if you must do with the oil, then yeah. the likes of the olive oil, okay. yes, those what are said to be, you know, falls under the monounsaturated uh, the monounsaturated fat fats, and polyunsaturated okay. fat. What of coconut oil? Coconut oil is heavy. It's heavy. On fat. Oh, wow. So, but it now that's why people making coconut oil is now not do the cold pressed. Uh, you know, okay. there are two ways of producing a uh, coconut, coconut oil. oil. Now, uh, people doing that having read how heavy the it fat in the fat. coconut oil could be uh, i think the process of cold pressing, pressing it makes it better, makes it better. Oh. i'm not too sure because it's not my really oh, my okay. line up i'm not too sure yes, it's only okay. so, there's only so much we can take thank you so much if you want to talk more you can follow her um splash greens and you yeah. can get so much more information on how to yeah. better your nutrition we're going to quick break and there's still so much more on wake up nigeria Welcome to the third hour of Wake Up Nigeria. If you're just tuning in, uh, I have one thing to say to you. Yeah. What? Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> You've missed a lot, but, but welcome. And thank you for waking up. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Because the whole world has been up for like two, three hours now. <laughs> and uh, well, hey, we've been here in the studio since 6 a.m. Now, we're not really sure if it's still as chilly as it was early in the morning yeah but it's, it's warming up a little bit that's good and hopefully the truck at uh, the vgc roundabout has been moved hopefully, hopefully it's yes. been about two hours since we talked about it yeah of course yeah uh, so hey 45 more minutes to go undiluted family entertainment just for you keep it locked with us mm. my name is titi Lyle. And I'm Yomi Ogwe. Did you see what we're doing in the kitchen earlier on with the chicken and the eggs and uh, everything yeah. just coming? Together. We, we're going to Mexico. I don't know what Tokwa is doing there. Ooh, uh -uh, look at the bread. Tokwa, you're not in the kitchen look today. I don't know why you just <laughs> found <laughs> your way. Yomi, you just... we're not fighting okay. now. Yeah. If I just let me visit your space, is it a problem? Okay, uh, yeah. So it's you're visiting. Fighting. Fight. You're visiting. Anyway, but so... Uh, Chef Nathaniel and I have, you know, a long-standing wow. relationship. Wow, <laughs> well, Y'all are, are new. Everyone wow. is making claims now. Yes. Shoot your shot. He's a very me. good friend of mine. So yeah. anyway, Chef Nathaniel has this thing that he's doing now. Uh, right. So now everything that he cooks on the show, you can find it online and you can also order for it as well. Nice. And he's launching his business. Oh, uh, so it's, how it's nice. Very nice, very nice. Great, so that's going to be happening. Great. Yeah, 90% <laughs> off. So anyway, yeah. we're we're going uh, straight to uh, the rest of the highlights that we have for the rest of the day. We still have home makeover and interior decoration trends to look out for in 2020. You need to stick around for that segment so you can learn a thing or two. Now there will be a musical performance coming up. Uh, very shortly from Jack Z with Isha for me. Yeah, nice. And finally, we have fast rising Nigerian comedian, actor, and MC Bokumi, popularly known as Preacher. Um, sir, if you don't do time by in the ministry, uh, as I was passing by, the Lord laid in my heart to tell you that you are disturbing the spirit. Ah, the Lord is very right. Because you are disturbing me. Because so there are two guys. So are, are there two guys? The, uh, the preacher? Because there's always two of them in the yes, video. Well, 
you know, most of the skits now have to have, you know, people sort of... Okay, like other characters. Yeah, other yeah. characters, making them Should happen. we start out like our own skit? I think we, are, we already kind of do that d during our banter, you know, thing. We, we have our laughs no, we're talking about skits, skits, like actual, actual skits. Old characters. Yeah, I can only yeah, imagine what looks like a lot of work, click. man. You'll be, you'll be <laughs> Ia something. Wow, Ia. Then... I would like you to play the Agbero. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not you don't want to see Yomi as like, no, but really, if Yomi wants sure. to play an agro, you yeah. will, you will love it. Are you sure? Like I could try. I, mean, I, I think today yeah. he spoke his first pigeon English for the first time. Today. Oh come on! When the first, uh, the first hour when he said. He sure for me. Wow. <laughs> he sure, sure for, for me. me. No, so that, he was that's said, what... You just got it right now. He said he sure for me. <laughs> okay. I didn't come from London. No. Suddenly. <laughs> Yeah, I've lived <laughs> I've lived here all my life. But anyway, so yeah, so he had a he had a political campaign in school. Oh. He had to connect with the people. Oh yeah. Exactly. He so, knows yeah. how to do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna wait and see. And watch out for our skits coming up soon. Soon, soon and we'll work on it. Uh yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. we have to go to the news now. Brian is on standby. I mean, I would like you to play the role of Agbero, you know? That fine boy Agbero. That's exactly. what you're gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> the commando, no. Oh boy. Cases of Lassa fever are on the rise. 84 cases have been recorded in Ondo State this year, and 16 persons have also died. State epidemiologist Stephen Fagbemi disclosed this during a meeting with Governor Luaru Timi Akuredelu and local government chairman in Akure. According to him, the 16 patients died because their cases had reached an advanced stage before they were brought to hospitals. He adds that 47 people who are on admission are responding to treatment, while 21 others have already been discharged. In the first two weeks, of, until now, like we are less than three weeks, we have reported 84 from five cases in Ondo State. And then we are approaching the season. The, the peak of time we expect Lassa fever to occur is yet to come. It's around February, March. So the implication for this is our treatment center, they are already overwhelmed to even get bed space for patients. You need to face an important challenge now. And unfortunately, this is, this is probably not an area you can make money. Because uh, usually it's only where you can make money that you always have to work. And at least five persons have also died in suspected case of Lassa fever in Kano State. Four of the victims are medical professionals and fifth is a pregnant woman who underwent cesarean section at Amino Kano Teaching Hospital. Our correspondent Ibrahim Isa has more on this. Reasons for the death of five people, including four medical professionals and a patient, is yet to be confirmed. The Kano State Ministry for Health says it has since taken blood samples and has been transmitted for investigation, which would take about 48 hours. Only upon completion of investigation would the ministry conclude that Lassa was responsible for the death of doctors and a patient. Amini Kano Teaching Hospital, where the incident occurred, has since taken measures during its stakeholders' meeting that contact tracing is presently being undertaken. The hospital is currently sensitizing its staff. Similarly, the Nigerian Medical Association in Kano State expressed sadness over the loss of lives of its members due to suspected disease. We are waiting for the result of the investigation, and as soon as they are available, we will bring you more updates on the matter. And the Ministry of Health will be briefing the media today on this development. Now, President Muhammad Buhari has condemned the killing of an official of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Adama State, Lawan Andimi, by Boko Haram militants, describing it as cruel, inhuman, and deliberately provocative. President Buhari is also condoling with the Christian community all over Nigeria, the government, of, uh, the government and people of Adama State, and the bishop's family over the laws. He has assured that the terrorists will continue to pay a heavy price for their actions and will comprehensively be defeated by Nigeria's armed forces. Outside Nigeria, the impeachment trial of U.S. President Donald Trump is taking place in the Senate with strict rules in place. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer uh, followed Republican uh, Mitch McConnell on the floor to make the Democratic case for rules that allow more witnesses to testify. He said a trial needs witnesses to be fair and that a trial without evidence is not a trial but a cover-up. Schumer said that if Republicans were to block witness testimony, it would allow future presidents to commit impeachable crimes and impunity. And that's it on the news update today on Wake Up Nigeria. Bye now.
Welcome back. Now you know we're in 2020. And as, as with all things, people like to do things, uh, you know, try to spruce things up a little bit, whether in your home or in your office. And on Wednesdays, we like to talk about the things that have to do with uh, decorations and, you know, home makeovers, you know. And that's the segment that we have right now. And I have here with me uh, in the studio uh, one of our guests who's going to be uh, t giving us tips on how to beautify that home office, uh, you know, or any other space that you can, you know, use to change up things a little bit at home. And her name is Deborah Ogenetega, and she's joining us this morning. She is a professional uh, interior designer. So talk to us. I mean, it's 2020. I know things things are changing a lot in, in different areas. Internationally, it looks like people are. Uh, using minimalist designs, reducing what's in the office. So you walk into an office and it just looks almost empty, like table, chair, not too many things, not too many pieces of paper. Yeah, well, what do you think? Out. What do you think that people should be uh, looking out for in 2020? Well, firstly, you know, there's some design trends that, that we've seen over years, mm. like um, wallpapers. Wallpaper? Okay. Yeah, we've seen um, the POP wall units, mm -hmm. we've seen um, the rose gold and you know and you know so it's like an everyday thing that when you walk into spaces that's what that in fact you can envisage that this is what you're going to see in a space so it's almost like there are some evergreen designs that yes. you can fill with and so because i mean the long that, that i've seen like wallpaper in people's offices but wallpaper are a good way to go if you're if you're thinking about sprucing things up well for i think we've seen enough of wallpaper so mm. i feel we should do more of the minimalist and Scandinavian um, interior designs. Mm. Luckily for us, we now have the laminate flooring, you know, so people are beginning to embrace that. I'm sure this is what you have here. Mm. Yeah, so people are beginning to embrace it. I, I feel we should do more of these um, biophilic um, designs, mm. you know, which lays emphasis on um, connecting um, humans and nature together mm. in a space. So if we maybe after doing this kind of flooring, like a wood flooring, yes. then we then to maybe in, use... You know, impute like um, natural lightings, plants. Plants in, in yes. like indoor plants. Clay and, like and all that. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so that would be nice for an office and it would be a nice space to yes. to work out of, you know, because you, you, know, you can get inspired and all of that. So um, any other thing that we should, we should be looking out for for the office? Okay, for the office, I think um, most of the offices now we just, you know, put um, a table and chair and you know, and that works. But I feel mm. we need to accessorize more. Like you know, people work late, this, especially in Lagos. Mm. Some people don't want to get home on time because of traffic. You know, like infuse like a table lamp, mm. you know, like a um, flower pot on their spaces to make them look, you know, um, have feel of nature and mm. you know, make them comfortable. In fact, if you're going to turn off the lights, you at least you need like a table lamp to you know. Mm. to work with and also it's basically most spaces don't really have that yeah yeah so I, I think space. I think you know just like you said I mean there are lots of people who spend more time in the office than at home so if you're spending a lot of time in the office you might as well make it uh, Very a place comfy. that you're, you're exactly. going to be comfortable yeah with. and maybe like uh, a, a section where you can actually relax mm. you know for give the staff this comfort so they don't get to rush home, you know, and that will optimize um, mm. the ability to work. A lot of people also think that, you know, when you're, when you're trying to change things, especially in an office situation, it's just like an added expense. So is it opportunity cost or are you, th are you thinking maybe you might gain more if you, if you upgraded your office? You will gain more if you upgrade your office because, you know, we have a monotonous lifestyle, especially when you're working in nine to five. Mm. So um, people should look forward to coming to the office. People should be proud of saying that, I mean, this is where I work. And when the friends, when their friends or client get to come to the office, they'll feel like, okay, this people is a know nice what, space. yes, this yeah. is a nice place, they know what they're doing. Mm. So I don't think it's, um, it should be a first when it comes to the funding to upgrade your space, especially for your staff and your potential clients. Very nice, very nice. So uh, let's go home <laughs> because, you know, the, a lot of times, again, that's where a lot, lots of people spend their time. That's where you spend your weekend. And so what should people, so if you're doing minimalist, uh, minimalist designs in your office, you know, trying to tone things down a little bit and getting rid of carpets and things like that, what should you do in your house? Well, my preference normally, because I've seen 
the contemporary homes, which is like the trend. In fact, every designer does a contemporary, they do contemporary homes, but mm. I, I didn't want to do the Nigerian, you know, design, so I researched for interiors abroad. So mm. that's what I actually, you know, that's my, that's my niche. Mm. So um, I still feel we should still put in those natural elements and, you know, have a bigger window, you know, brighter space natural lighting, mm. you know, plans to come into the homes instead so, of the uh, brass and, uh, you know, uh, the metal and all Metals that. and things like that. Yes. So the, things, the reason why we use metals in Nigeria <laughs> is because of security. So even if you have, like, a large window, there'll still be, like, huge security bars there so that people don't get in. Yes, I know. I get that. I, I, but nowadays you could tell that everybody pays estate security fee. Mm. Yes, so, and you're... you're compound is secured and most of the big windows are actually not done for you know mostly for penthouses mm -hmm. like the duplexes yes right. it's it's, it's uh, advisable to infuse that kind of design but when it comes to you know the block of flats and the one bedroom flat the normal two bedroom flats then we can actually do you know not so small window and also I actually want to put ship in this because of the landlord mm. I actually use primary colors to paint the room you walk into a room you see green walls mm. you see red walls you see pink walls and all but when you, there's, there's this feeling you get when you, when the space is bright, mm. you know, it's more accommodating, it's not depressing. So I think we should look in that aspect more for... So brighter colors brighter uh, for the house. Yes. Uh, to give you that, you know, homely feeling Home, and, yes. all, and all of that. Any other thing that we should, we should look at as we round off? Um, like I said, I'm a lover of plants and nature. So, I so plants, nature... nature. Infuse those in your house. Everything is so yeah, so uh, 2020 is all about letting in uh, natural light, ensuring that you have plants and so that you can have a relaxed home or office. Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, today. Hopefully, you join us again and talk a little bit more about this uh, our designs for 2020. Anyway, Jack Z is on standby for us for a performance. Thank you so much, Yomi. Now, Ebuele Jude Non. By his stage name, Jexy is an Afropop artist from Edo State who is based here in Lagos. Now, aside from being an artist, Jexy is also a student of Ambrose Ali University studying public administration. And he is about to give us our second music performance for today. Now, quickly, you just told me you came into Lagos for this last night? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, can, I must say that's a lot of dedication. <laughs> so tell us about the song you're performing this morning. What's the title? Yeah, the title of the song is Isha For Me. Isha For You. Okay, so what, um, what inspired Isha For Me? Well, you know, let me say Nigeria is hard for now. Yeah. Yes, I'm so many people are going through hard stuff, but it's just a motivational song trying to let my people know that they should just have this belief as long they are this hard working person, yeah. they never be learned. Okay. So definitely tomorrow will sure be much more better. Be sure for them. Be sure for as them. long as they go day. Okay, so no, you came all the way from school. Yeah. So I'm sure you have your classmates, your friends watching. Yeah. So you have to show all of us that it's sure for you today. Come on, today, today. <laughs> okay then. The guys know. I keep my flow every time, every year. I'm a yeah, I'm making this money is the most. Nobody will it take every year. I'm a boss. You show up for me and I only call that the trust. I don't need your work, I mean show up. I did pray, make my house you pay. God bless you, no delay. If you hate me, no delay. You show up for me. Welcome back. Now, finally, we're joined by fast rising Nigerian comedian, actor, scriptwriter, and MC Bukumi, popularly known as Preacher. Now, he's a lead character in the Pastor Theo comedy skits. And uh, hey, he is so much more as well. He's also been part of a production team. Uh, for the likes of Teju Babyface, there's so much about you. Many people don't know. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, I feel like saying Pastor Tio. <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel like saying that. Um, <laughs> when you say Pastor Tio, that means I'm trying to get a part of me that is um, like we only call me Prophet Tio Flash. And turn around with Tio Flash. When you say that, you have to, uh, have to be energetic okay. about it. He's a man of God. They call me Nushubu. There's no traffic. And I came to Lagos to pick the car. Okay. In Lagos. Oh. I'm gonna act like I understand what you said, <laughs> but I didn't. But it sounded mm. interesting, and I'm I'm mm. detecting a particular dialect of Yoruba. Is that Ibadan? Oh, where is that see, from? See, um, um, Bukubi preacher. Um, I was 
born and raised in the city of Ibadan. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm not originally from Ibadan, but Ibadan is my city. Mm. Um, that's the city I grew up. That was the city where my, um, my life, kind of my family, I had my struggles there. I became um, an actor there, mm. church acting. Yeah. And uh, so Ibadan is me. Okay. So, so it feels like when you say Ibadan, the city, you know, many people don't think of Ibadan as city. Oh, it's the gospel people. You people are, you, yeah. the gospel people have this belief. <laughs> and let's clear it. Okay. Ibadan is a city. Okay. All right. Television force, we have it. All right. University, we have it. Mm. And we have gates in Ibadan. Yes. I mean, there's a toll gate. But Ibadan, I think the idea of Ibadan <laughs> that, the idea of Ibadan that an average Lagosian have is what they get on Twitter. Mm. So you see them say Ibadan girls. You see wow. them say, but Ibadan girls are fine. They're like foreign products. If you see them. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk about your products, okay. especially what you do online. Okay. I, I was on your Instagram page, mm -hmm. and I saw that you're doing this uh, interviews in cars. What do you call that? Oh, Ride With Me. Ride With um, Me. You see, um, about? throw back a little bit into my person. I, I train on that Teji baby face. Yeah. Um, that's not funny. Don't say, yeah. yeah. It's not funny. I can see uh, the poise. I can um, see the energy. Um, because of um, Teju, Teju is excellence mm. or nothing. Uh, it's either we are getting it or we are not doing it. So, um, of course, I, I have to, to help with production on set. I have to manage with him. So, I, I have this idea. For me, I look at what he's doing. It takes millions of naira to produce Teju Baby Face show. And I need to do something that um, the... Generation can connect. See, we, we don't have time for this two hours um, of a, one show. Now, it's, the show is beautiful because there's so many segments, you know, somebody is cooking, somebody is talking, somebody. That's why you can flow around. But a show, man is sitting down through house. So I felt that, okay, let's do something that these people can connect with, then reduce the budget. Okay. I bring you into the car. Uh, we ride along. I'm the DJ. I'm the sound man. I'm the. <laughs> you can we do that? Come around, then we, it, it's an idea for me to do what you do on, on, on set, mm. but in a more smaller way, so that we can ride along. And, um, so the sort of things you talk about in mm. this Ride With Me show, mm -hmm. so what do they border around? Now, the fact that you already have Preacher in your name okay. also gives you a particular direction. Oh, I'm, that I'm, has I'm, a lot to do with the church. My father right? is a pastor. Okay. Yes. And um, so I used to work as a banker. I used to be a banker when I came to Lagos. I don't like Lagos because you see Lagos for me. Ah, because it's this city, there is this thing as an Ibadan boy that we believe that you people, you know, the questions are the people that only rush to do everything. You people do everything in a rush. Like you are always in a hurry. So for an average Ibadan boy, I'm like, this Lagos. So I came in to Lagos and, and I was working in the bank. Then I, I used to write. I, I write a lot of um, articles. So I used to sign my, okay. with the preacher's son. Okay. Because my father is a preacher, so I use preacher's son. So at some point, I, then I get to speak for myself, so I removed preacher's son. Ah, even me, I'm a preacher. So when I resigned banking, I needed a name for and what I want to it? do. The so preacher. preacher. Beautiful. Stick. Speaking of the preacher, mm. we have some clips for you to see so you know exactly what we're talking about. Oh. Mm. I'm going to tell you the first time I can't see that. Uh, my name is Daniel. Ah, how did you know? <laughs> the spirit revealed it to me. Ah, your spirit is a very good spirit. Mm. They said we should come here. Mm -hmm. We're the first time mm. Say we should come. Come, 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 come. For the past five to ten weeks, you have been coming here. If your name is not Daniel today, it is Dan Ladi. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord, the Lord looks at the heart. It's how you give. It's, mm. it's your heart. It's not how much that you give. Mm. But, mm. but how much, how many first timer packages did you end up taking? <laughs> ten, ten. Ten, ten. I did ten before they, they bounced me. Oh dear me. Yeah. No, but really, uh, your skits are, are interesting uh, and I feel like you are a major part of them um, in terms of, you mentioned yourself, uh, camera, light, sound, and you also just mentioned script. But writing scripts are not easy. Yes. Uh, especially since a lot of people are doing the online skit thing now. Mm. So how do you find new ideas? Um, my stories. Okay. Um, I, I like to say my stories. I like to... Um, I, I grew up in, 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 in a Yoruba home, mm. raised by a Yoruba mother. There's nothing funny about that. See, my mother beat as if there's a reward for it in heaven. Wow. My mommy, my mommy enjoys beating. So mm. those are my stories. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up mm. uh, a little bit um, rough, like they say. Like most Nigerians, I had my own fair share of struggles. Uh, there was a time in my life in Ibadan that I had to sell drinks in traffic. Mm. Um, you know, there was a time that I had to... Um, one of my friends that had a block industry, we had to go work there to wet the block to make okay. money. So, mm. I, 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 a lot. So, mm. there's this story about okay, this and that. And if you live in Nigeria, yeah. 
there is story in Nigeria. Oh. Mm. The, Politicians are is. giving you their own. Politicians uh, <laughs> are giving you their own. Preacher, mm. preacher, mm. Mm. your stories, we're going to look out for them online. Please do. But mm. you don't have to wait for a first timer package. Even though you're a first timer mm. here, there is food <laughs> in the food. kitchen. I, I, I wanted to ask, are, are we going to. <laughs> Uh, ignore you don't the aroma need to of be a first time at it. I have a question about so this. So if you food. come back next time, uh, I have we'll a question. Have a so that your story will change for good. Sorry, the Jerusalem is similar, but Jerusalem we went to. Yeah, the topic is in Jesus, where they buried Jesus. Tipa meta the moko wale. You brought the three exam. Tipa meta three tipas of sand. Eh, go le ri ya no no. So that you will see God's glory. You want to say call anyone who are doing? You don't want to build us this year. Nice, nice. Ah, well done, Great. man. And welcome <laughs> to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, in this kitchen is impossible. Now, but I want to ask you, please. Mm. I gave you bread. Is it possible for this thing? Uh. <laughs> and you did something that is bad. Uh. And you are doing this thing. I, I was in the waiting room. Mm. You cut the edge of the bread. What? That is the thing that holds the bread together. In case you want to put it like tea. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's a reason why he did that. And yeah. once you taste it, you'll be able it's to understand home. the reason. Yes, yes, this is yours. As, so as a, a first time, I, I don't know when I'm coming back to this thing. As yeah. a first time, I'm our ministry. As a, so yeah, like, so. Um, uh, but this is uh, Chef Nathaniel of Natido's Kitchen. Oh, that's so my middle name, by the way. Oh, okay. Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Oh, nice. Did you just turn to your middle name? No, 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 no. no. You had it before. No, because you can cook. It's my middle name. Okay, so talk to us about uh, what So this is like a Mexican dish called quesadilla. Okay. Desperado people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's in the movie. So it's basically made with cheese, chicken, and vegetables mm. with the bread. Mm. So we um, fry the chicken, right. the vegetables, and mm. we mm. put it in the bread and... That's what's yeah. All right, well done, Chef, and congratulations on the launch of your uh, on your online uh, restaurant that's coming up very soon. Yeah. Well, a big thank you to Homely NG uh, for the kitchen accessories on the show. Yes, indeed, and as always, we'll be back bright and early, 6 a.m. Please make sure you tune in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have a great day, everyone. Follow this guy on Instagram. Super Bye. funny. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. See you tomorrow. <laughs>